y'all welcome back to another adventure as you can tell today's video is not my usual content but i wanted to share with you my recruiting process and my experience with everything especially in the year of covid a little weird but i assume it'll be somewhat similar to you no matter what sport you are in what state you're from what country you're from um i live in florida i am a senior right now at high school and I dive and I've committed to Towson University. Sorry, I just like to say that and go Tigers. Um, <laughs> but a little disclaimer before we get started, obviously my recruiting experience is not gonna be exactly like yours or anything like that, but I do believe no matter what sport you play or what of that nature, it'll be similar and hopefully you can find this video useful if you do please give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions at all please 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 feel free to comment them in the comment section i will do my best to answer them to the best of my ability so without further ado let's get started with this video so i first started my recruiting process the summer of my junior year and i started with a list of all the colleges in the united states that have my sport. So with diving, it might be a little different than football because most schools have football, but most schools don't have diving. And for me, I had to filter out all the D2 and D3 schools because I knew I wanted to be a division one diver. So that is also something else I would add to adding your list of colleges. For me, I wanted a D1 school with a football team that had women and men swimming and diving as well as it was out of state because yes florida is a great state but i have been living here now for 17 years and i wanted out and if you don't know towson is in maryland it has a football team and it is both men and women swimming and diving so it checked all those boxes off for me yours is obviously going to be different maybe you want to make sure that they have a women's soccer team and a men's soccer team or they're in your state, or they're out of your state, or maybe you don't care if they have a football team, but you really want them to have a sorority or fraternity, so Greek life. It really just depends on what you're looking for for your college experience, but those are some examples of mine. So for example, when I went to the University of Massachusetts, which I actually vlogged, if you wanna check that out for my official visit, it'll be linked in the description. But when I went on that, I actually had to make a connecting flight from Florida to Miami, and then from Miami to Connecticut. And then from Connecticut, we had to make a 45 minute drive. Whereas I, when I went to Towson, I had a direct flight from I had a direct flight from Florida to Maryland, and then from Maryland, we took a short drive to the University of Towson. And so that was one thing that stood out to me that pushed me to go more towards Towson than other schools. Another thing to look out for is for diving, we used a website called Be Recruited to be recruited to reach out to coaches, to, for coaches to find us. I know for football, they use Twitter. So that is something I would research for your specific sport if you are looking to be recruited. As I mentioned that we use Be Recruited, I believe there's also a website called Captain U. So I would just do some research online. All you have to do is like, diving recruiting or soccer recruiting websites and then they should pop up but if you are a diver i would definitely recommend be recruited but also just send emails out to college coaches i'll put in some examples of some that i used but i would really recommend just reaching out to those colleges but do not send them as a full list of like so when you write an email send it specifically to that college do not mass send your email to every single college coach out there because they will know. Make it specific so at the end say, go Tigers, go Wildcats, go Bulldogs. Something that makes it personal so the coach knows that you took the effort and the time to specifically write that college. That is something I learned that helps you stand out. The thing to do for sports specifically is visit athletic pages. So on Instagram, you can type in your college and then your sport and then it should pop up that they have an Instagram. So for your Towson, you could just look up TU, I believe it's Towson Swim and Dive and then Towson Diving on Instagram and both of them should pop up. So then for your sport, you could put in Towson Football, Towson Soccer and it should pop up. And so just getting like an idea of what the team has in skill set and what the environment is like was very important to me. I did a lot of research of just stalking people on Instagram, as well as the team members. They most likely will accept your follow request if they're private or you can just follow them if they're public. And it sounds a little weird, but I promise just like seeing what their 
social media looks like is very important because if they're posting stuff that you're not affiliated with, like maybe partying or I don't know, stuff like that, um, I didn't find that as appealing. So I would make sure to note that in my head for that specific school if that school was okay with them posting that. Another thing that I did was I researched the roster for each team to try and figure out how many people were graduating in that class that I was graduating in in high school. So I'm the class of 22. So I would research for example, at Towson, because I'm going there, I'm just gonna give them quick shout outs that there are two senior divers that are female and we've actually recruited myself and another senior in my grade for to replace their spots. So that is something I would look for is to see how many people in your grade are going to be graduating co that college that you're looking at for your year. To give you an example of how many spots that college might be looking at. The thing that I did was I would research the coaches at a specific school. So again, I will be using the example of Towson. The dive coach there is Ben. So I would look up on the internet Ben and see what awards he's gotten, what he did before coming to Towson, if he was a diver in college, his kind of backstory, which sounds a little weird saying it out loud, but in the overall view of things, it's good to try and get a full understanding of who the person is that's trying to recruit you. And so I definitely found out that Ben was like the best person ever. He watches the vlog. He's probably watching this video. Hi, Ben. And so I would just recommend trying to figure out the personality of the coach, asking the team how they feel about the coaching system and how they feel about the team environment as well as the school, if they reach out to you on social media but we'll get down the road to that. But definitely try and do your research on the coach, especially if you wanna add that into your emails. If you're like, oh, I saw that you were up for this award, congratulations, that's so cool. Or I saw the school nominated you for this because you won this, like congratulations. That also adds to making your emails more personal and college coaches love that. I would also like to add, if there are any questionnaires for you to fill out on the website, for the school in general or your specific sport, fill those out. It will notify the coach if you fill them out and normally in their emails, they were ask you to fill them out. So I would definitely fill out those questionnaires if you can find them on the website. So before you get started really with your recruiting process, I would definitely review your social media. Make sure that whatever you have posted is public to everyone. So even if you're a private account, if someone from the team requests to follow you and you accept it, they will see everything that you have posted. So make sure it's up to standards with the school and with yourself. When I first started my recruiting process, I tried to get a video together of some of my better dives from practice at dryland and in the weight room and at water. So for each sport, it's a little bit different. I am most well known with diving, but for swimming, you might want to put together a practice video of you at swim practice in the water and then you also weightlifting, stuff like that so they get a well-rounded picture of you in your athletic field but definitely try and put a video together and make sure you can send that with your email uh i believe it's just sarah parksfold on youtube you can find some of my recruiting videos and i just labeled them like working on 405c working on 205c and just stuff like that so in diving that means reverse two and a half and back two and a half and so just say like working on this skill set or working on that it would definitely help the coach get a well-rounded picture of you as an athlete because they also like to see your fails. So for diving, we call those smacks. And I think they're hilarious to watch smack videos and so do college coaches. So definitely make sure to add some of those funny fails too. Another thing I would recommend before you get started is definitely talking to your coach right now. If you have a club coach, maybe talk to your club coach or if you don't have a club coach, definitely try talking to your high school coach. For me, my high school coach is my club coach. So shout out to coach if you're watching, hey. Um, he really helped me get started. If I had any questions, he'd help me answer them. He also would reach out to some colleges that might not have received my emails or had checked on me. So he would give them a call and be like, hi, I'm Mr. Bill Walker. My diver is Sarah Parksfold from St. Pete Club Diving. I was wondering if you could take a look at her. So just having your coach give you advice or trying to help you out is very important. So I would definitely recommend talking to your coach before getting. So another thing I would definitely do is keep an open mind. For myself, I definitely, when I first started, was like, I'm staying in the SEC, like 
nothing's gonna happen like I'm gonna be an SEC diver and then as I started to reach out to more colleges I realized the SEC might not be for me and I actually found Towson on our Thanksgiving trip to Maryland and I had a co with Ben and I saw the campus and I literally like fell in love with the place and I was like Towson like what's that and then once I had my call with Ben and saw the campus I was like in love I knew that was the school I wanted to go to but before that I had never heard of Towson I like didn't even think about going to school in Maryland or even up that north so well north for me it's kind of you know but I had never thought about that so definitely keep an open mind when you're doing your recruiting process because you might think you want to go to one school and then you end up going to another one that you like even more the last thing i would really recommend doing is responding to everyone's email who reads out to you because i know when i had some college coaches that would never respond to me i got kind of down about that and it's the same way for like colleges that reach out to you that never hear back even d3 coaches i would respond to like Thank you for reaching out i'm actually looking at division one schools in this area but if you know anyone please let me know because you never know who anyone knows because there might be a d3 coach that knows so and so but if you didn't respond to that d3 coach or you were rude to them they're going to tell that d1 coach and then you just ruin that relationship so i would definitely keep an open mind to everyone and respond to all those emails that you get lee if you have any questions please let me know and I will do my best to answer them. And if you like this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already. And I'll see you next time. Peace.